The PlayStation 1 was known for many things. It had timeless platforming mascots, with Crash and Spyro, tons of shooters, and it even served as the incubator for the survival horror genre as we know it today. Before we begin, please consider subscribing and enabling all notifications by clicking the bell icon. With that out of the way, let's get started. The PS1 had even more than that going on though. One of the biggest niches the system was able to carve out for itself was a healthy selection of Japanese-style role-playing games. These JRPGs would rarely exceed the popularity of PlayStation's bigger titles, but a few games, like Final Fantasy VII, would. And that would spark more and more interest in the genre as a whole. Which would, of course, lead to more sales and more games. Legend of Dragoon was one of those games. It was a game that surely didn't eclipse the Final Fantasy series in terms of sales or critical reception, but it still managed to cultivate a sizable fan base with its excellent take on the JRPG format. Legend of Dragoon didn't go far outside of the box conceptually, but it was rewarded for its tight execution of the somewhat more realistic story than most other JRPGs of the time. The game was praised for its artistic elements like lush backgrounds and highly detailed character models, and even given compliments for some of its more inscrutable battle system elements. The reward went far beyond just positive critical reception though, as the game would sell astoundingly well in both the US and Japan which was extremely rare for a JRPG of any type at that time. So, given all of that, what happened? Why did this game launch to such success and then just kind of cease to become anything else? What the hell happened to Legend of Dragoon? And where is the sequel? Nowadays, it's not a secret that Legend of Dragoon is a bona fide classic. This isn't for no reason either. It was a game that combined interesting characters, some reasonably deep story threads, and a handful of fun twists on the JRPG format. For instance, the time-based attacks. Hitting the right button at the exact right moment can keep a combo going and increase the damage you deal, while messing it up can have the opposite effect. Once you mastered the attacks, you would soon notice your SP going up. Once you use that to become a Dragoon, battles would intensify significantly, as you were now far more powerful and had access to new attacks in this form. The Dragoons themselves would also be leveled up, and once you mastered that, achieving special attacks once all three of your character's Dragoons were all leveled up was yet another layer to achieve and master. This combat system was made all the more intricate with the standard elements and status effects that you would see in typical JRPGs. Between battles, the game had lots of towns and dungeons to explore. These areas are perhaps one of Dragoon's most underrated features, as they are so intricately designed and brimming with personality and intrigue at every turn. Some of the pre-rendered backgrounds would even have motion, like glistening water or blowing wind or scrolling layers. These effects were subtle, but also made the worlds that they represented feel so much more alive. Again, it might not blow your socks off by today's standards, but at the time, there really weren't very many games nailing it like Legend of Dragoon was. All of this, of course, is what makes its complete lack of a follow-up all the more puzzling. Legend of Dragoon was made in-house at Japan Studio by many of the people who are still around in PlayStation today albeit now in much higher management-focused roles. A sequel has not been made, but that's apparently not for a lack of trying. Shuhei Yoshida has actually gone out of his way to admit that a Legend of Dragoon sequel was in pre-production fairly shortly after the original one came out, although he had left Japan Studio and thusly wasn't entirely privy to all of the details surrounding its cancellation, he does confirm that it did exist at one time in some form. So, why the cancellation? Well, there could be a ton of reasons. Game studios like Japan Studio rarely sat on their laurels, so there is plenty of reason to believe that they just got interested in the new handful of projects that they had planned, including titles for the upcoming and hotly anticipated PlayStation 2. 
Also, given that Yoshida left the studio to head up other departments within PlayStation, perhaps it just didn't feel right moving on with the series without him being present. Or, given that Final Fantasy had dominated the market with 7, 8, and 9 by the end of the PS1's life, it's entirely possible that they just felt outgunned by the folks over at Squaresoft, who seemed to be locking up a bigger and bigger chunk of the market with each Final Fantasy release. As much as I understand that last one, I really hope that's not it, though, as I feel like that would be a huge misread of the market. JRPG fans often owned everything they could get. Even if it took them some time, they would have gotten around to Legend of Dragoon 2. That said, outside of the standalone soundtrack released in 2000 and a very brief manga series later on that same year, Legend of Dragoon would stay as it was, a video game franchise that was left behind all too soon and became shockingly obscure to those outside of its cult following, despite how great its one game was. Sony would get a clue as to how popular the IP was when the game was released on the digital storefront of the PlayStation 3. To this day, it's one of the better-selling games they ever did that with, and that's saying a lot, given that Resident Evil, Crash Bandicoot, and Metal Gear Solid are also on that same storefront. But alas, after all this time, the fact that we haven't gotten a sequel is sort of its own omen as to whether or not we ever will. As is so often the case in situations like this, the longer we go without a sequel to Legend of Dragoon, the less likely it is that we will ever get one. As demand and popularity continues to slide for the game, and the JRPG genre continues to grow and change without it, there is less and less of a reason for anyone to pick it up and dust it off with a brand new game. But I've certainly been wrong before, so at the end of the day, only time will tell. And that brings us to the end of the video. A quick request, we upload new videos every single day. And if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing. It really, really helps us out. Also, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon so that you can receive daily video updates. Thanks for watching.